Shalom, beloved, a word. <clears throat> I had already made this video, but for some reason, it just went the way of gone. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to speak about Genesis chapter 9, verse 27. I'm going to keep it short, although the message is full, and hope that this gets through. Okay, now, in the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 27, it says, Yah shall enlarge Jepheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. All right? Yah shall enlarge Jepheth. When you look at <clears throat> that first portion of the verse, Jepheth and the translation and the meaning, Jepheth itself means to enlarge. But the translations have been manipulated and you have certain groups that are trying to narrate and remove. When it says Yasso enlarge, that means to expand, to increase, to open up Jepheth, okay? And when it says, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, this has created confusion, all right? This has created confusion because many think, well, Yah is talking about himself dwelling in the tents of Shem, but others take it as a duality. Now, we do know that Jephthah did in fact come into the tents of Shem, whether we are talking about the Mideas, the Romans, the Greeks, the Babylonians and overthrow the uh, tents of Shem and take over their land. We also know, according to the book of Romans, there are those who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan. Okay, so we have that interpretation. We even know about Antiochus Epiphanes, the six, if I got it right, that many of them came into the temple, they defiled the temple, they brought in their no gods, they brought in pork, they tried to force the people to eat pork, they committed atrocities against Yasharel. Many of that, those uh, books are in, or those stories and is in the book of the Maccabees. Um, however, even though we know he shall increase, he shall open up, this can also be interpreted as take the land, move beyond the lands, um, take on many beliefs, okay? But to remove confusion, now we're gonna go into the book of Jubilees, chapter seven, verse 12. And Yah shall enlarge Jephthah, and Yah shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. We're in the book of Jubilees, chapter seven, verse 12. Yah shall enlarge Jephthah, and Yah shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. This is Noah talking. This is Noah talking. All right. Now we're going to go into the book of Jubilees, chapter 8, verse 18. Noah is giving out the lands to his sons. All right. He's giving out the lands to Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Noah is speaking to Shem, or, and Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons, and he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy, for he had said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and may the Lord dwell in the dwelling of Shem, may the Lord dwell in the dwelling of Shem. Now, he also knew this is no, that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies and the dwelling of the Lord and Mount Sinai, the center of the desert and Mount Zion, the center of the neighbor of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other, okay? And the reason why uh, he knew that a blessed portion had come to Shem and his sons unto the generations forever. The whole land of Eden, 
the whole land of the Red Sea and the whole land of East India and on the Red Seas and the mountain thereof, I'm not gonna go into all of it. He knew that the Garden of Eden, which is the Holy of Holies and the dwelling of the Lord, Mount Sinai, the center of the desert, and Mount Zion, the center of the navel of the earth, these three were created as holy places facing each other. All of this was given to Shem, where the Most High would dwell, okay? Now, uh, I wanted, I'm going to, I'm going to just add it. The book of Exodus chapter 25, verse eight. I'm going to try to be quick about it. That way maybe I won't lose it this time. But sheesh, I had it done and I, I just don't know where it went. It went to a place called Gone. Gone, 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 long gone and forgot gone. It's in a place called Gone. Okay, now. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell amongst them. Who is that? That is Yah talking. He's in the book of Exodus. He's dwelling among Yasharel, the descendants of Shem. So when we look at the book of Genesis chapter 9, verse 27, it can become confusing. Okay. And God shall enlarge, open up, expand Jephthah. And he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. But we also know this can be a duality where Jephthah tries to take over and does indeed take over the dwelling in the tents of Shem. But that does not mean that Yah is there, okay? Because the book of Leviticus tells us, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I went to the book of Exodus, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. I'm sure that many of you know there are multiple statements where Yah dwells amongst his people, okay? I, I'm going to shorten this. That way, maybe it won't go out on me, all right? Um, also, we know that he dwelled among them in the flesh. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, all right? There's a lot of detail to this, but like I said, because I lost it, I don't know what happened to that video. I know I keep referring that, but uh, that kind of like ticked me a little bit. All right, now, we also know that the people went into exile. We know that because they did not obey the law, statutes, and commands of the Most High. We were sent into the lands of our enemies and have been under captivity for 400 years. So now the question is, even though he had dwelled among us, he spewed us out of the land because we did not keep the Sabbath. We followed the ways of the other nations. But now that that came about, what are we to do? We look at book, uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 40. He's talking about Yasharim. And if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land, because he put the land to sleep, beloved. He gave the land rest, since we would not honor it. He gave the land rest on her jubilees. So, once we confess, all right, and we know we walk contrary unto him, and he walked contrary unto us and brought us into the land of our enemies. And if we allow our uncircumcised hearts to be humble, then, and we accept the punishment of our iniquity, then will he remember the covenant, the love We have sinned, all of us, we've walked contrary to the most high. And this punishment we deserved according to his word and his covenant his commands and his law. And may he have mercy on us and on our ancestors and forgive us our sins and remember the covenant of that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we turn to him with a humble heart. 
all right? Now, after those days, all right? After those days, I'm in the book of Jubilees, chapter 23, starting at the 26th verse. This is Abraham talking to Jacob. Abraham knows that he is about to die. He also knows about the punishment and the evil we have done, but he also knows, all right, that once we begin to turn back to Yah, that he will hear us. I'm going to get the see for this is from the book of Jubilees, but I also want my book so that I can read it straight from what the Sefer says. So bear with me, beloved. Bear with me. Yes, 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 I have it. All right. So I'm going to read it. And like I said, the Book of Jubilees is in the Sefer. All right. This is chapter 23, verse 26. And in those days, the children shall begin to study the laws. We have awakened, beloved. We have awakened. This is once we confess our sins, the sins of our ancestors, we turn to Yah with a humble heart, recognizing what we have done, confessing it, accepting it, that we were deserving of it. Then he will remember the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. And in those days, the children shall begin to study the law and to seek the commandments and to return to the path of righteousness. And the day shall begin to grow many and increase amongst those children of men till their days draw nigh to 1,000 years. Yes, beloved, we start to live longer. Our father, Abraham, he lived to Jubilee and four score years, but he was actually shy. Of five years, he did not live the complete fourth score because he died at 175 years old. All right. And in those days, they sh shall grow, begin to grow many and increase among the children of men till their days draw nigh to 1,000 years and to a greater number of years than before, as was the number of days. And there shall be no old man, mm -mm. no one who is not satisfied with his days for all shall be as children and youth. We will literally regain our youth, beloved. We will be, re regain our youth, all right? And all their days shall they complete and live in peace and in joy. And there shall be no Satan, no enemy, no accuser, nor any evil destroyer. For all their days shall be days of blessing and healing, beloved. We need a healing and a blessing from all the evil about us. And at that time, the Lord will heal his servants. Come on now. And they shall rise up and see great peace and drive out their adversaries. And the righteous shall see and be thankful and rejoice with joy forever and ever. And shall see all their judgments and their curses on their enemies. Now, and their bones shall rest in the earth and their spirit shall have much joy. And they shall know that it is the Lord who executed judgment and shows mercy to hundreds and thousands and to all that love him. The fact that their bones shall rest in the earth tells you this is the millennium, the rule of Hamashiach. This is not the final judgment. And we also know that before I go to the book of Isaiah and back it up, I want to show how these events are happening right now. I'm going to read it from the Sefer, the Book of Jubilees. And in those days, the children shall begin to study the Torah. We're studying, beloved, praying for leadership and mercy from the Most High God and His Spirit. And to seek the commandments. We're looking for them. We're trying to understand them. We have teachers the Most High is blessing us with different people who lead us and guide us, be it to the books or how to pray and ask for forgiveness of our sins. And the day shall begin to grow many and increase among those children of men till their days draw nigh to 1,000 years. So we will increase below. But one of the things that we'll do is in those days, 
the children shall begin to study the laws and to seek the commandments and to return to the path of righteousness, beloved. This is when he is going to go after our enemies. This has already begun. There are many things in scripture that have not come to pass yet. They have not come to pass. We have not dwelled in all the lands that he's given us. We have not seen the fall of our enemies, although we see the plagues. We do see the plagues. I even thought about the plague of mice that's in Australia, and it reminded me of the Philistines when they took the Ark of the Covenant, and it was a plague breaking out amongst the Philistines. They had hemorrhoids and they had mites. How do you know? Because when they sent that Ark of the Covenant back to the Most High, they sent five golden hem hemorrhoids and five golden mice as a trespass offering in that, uh, on the sides of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, so even though they had had mice plagues before in Australia, never anything like this, never. And it's looking like it's going to increase and increase because the land is cleansing itself. The only way you cleanse the land of blood is with the blood of those who have spilt it. Who are they? They are the descendants, beloved. They are the descendants. We know that Britain emptied her prisons and her penal colonies into Australia and into, uh, uh, wait a minute, New Zealand, all right. They basically tried to commit genocide against people, but I don't want to digress. Now, this is the Book of Jubilees, chapter 23. How do we begin to get here? Because we're already on the move, beloved. We also see it backed up in the Book of Isaiah, chapter 65, starting at um, verse 17. And behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem of rejoicing and her people of joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. To be considered a child, Don, you would be a hundred years old and still considered a child. Okay? And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build in another inhabit. They shall not plant in another eat. For the days of a tree are as the days of my people. He's talking about the length of days. This is the same thing in the book of Jubilees, chapter 23. Okay. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. All right. And the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy <clears throat> in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. But here's the thing, beloved. And if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, this is Yah speaking, and they also have walked contrary unto me. Yes, we have, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I confess my iniquity, the iniquity of our ancestors. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. We are deserving of that punishment according to that righteous and holy word. And may it be heard of thee, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. 
if then their uncircumcised heart be humble and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then, woo, mm, 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 come on now, I, I got to highlight this. We, mm, this. Look, we all need to know. I'm not saying you don't, but for those who don't, we gonna do it twice. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember and I will remember the land. Why? Because he put the land to sleep to give it rest. So we gonna confess our iniquities, the iniquities of our fathers, which trespassed against the most high God and we walk contrary unto him, okay? And with an uncircumcised but humble heart, we're going to accept the punishment of our iniquity because we deserved it according to his word. Yes, we did. In his covenant. Yes, we did. Lord have mercy. Then, whoo, will he remember? All right, beloved. Once we know he remembers, this is what's happening because we are confessing, beloved. In those days, see, these are those days. These, listen, in those days, the children shall begin to study the laws. Aren't we studying, beloved? I know I'm studying. You study, trying to find out what's the information, what's the news. Somebody tell me, tell me, look, Lord said, this is what I got to do. I need to know. Help me grow. Help me walk. I want to run. I want to leap. I want to support. I want to be in the most highest number. Yes. And in those days, the children shall begin to study, study. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. The law and to seek the commandments, and to return to the path of righteousness. Woo, help me now, help me, help me. We're walking straight in it. We're swimming. It's all over us. Mercy of the most high. I just want to share this. Okay. I don't even want to make it long and drawn out, even though I was going to beloved. We're going to live. We're going to grow old. There won't be. We're going to grow. When I say old, let me strike that. We're going to live a long, long time. He's going to increase our years, but not our age. We're not going to age. We're going to keep our youth, okay? We're going to keep our youth. There won't be any deceiver, any destroyer, any accuser among us, but he's going to move us. Just that thousand-year reign, we about to come to it, beloved. And like I said, because I started this about Genesis 9, verse 27, I'm not even going to go that long because something might happen again. Okay, when you look in the book of Jubilee 7 and the book of Jubilees 8, book Jubilee 7, verse 12, book of Jubilees 8, verse 18, it breaks it down a little bit more for you that he dwells among Shem. Who's Shem? The descendants of Shem are Yashavah, beloved. Now, I got this word out, so before my computer goes crazy, a word, beloved. Touched by the most I can't give up, won't stop, don't stop, ain't gonna stop. When he lit it up in me, I had to light it up in you. A word, beloved. Shalom.